two weeks from today, the sentencing phase of this trial will get underway to answer the central question at the heart of this case. Should Brent Christensen live or die? It was the verdict Ying Ying Zheng's relatives had waited two years for, but it did little to ease their pain. <laughs> I want to bring my daughter home, pleaded Zheng's mother, whose anguish punctuated a heartrending two weeks. In stark contrast, Brent Christensen didn't flinch as the verdicts were read. His demeanor similar during eight days of testimony as the prosecution painted him as a cold, calculating killer who tortured Zheng and tried to hide his crime. Relieved, proud of the justice system in the U.S., that it's, um, that it's bringing justice to a family that very much deserves it and has wanted it so badly. In his closing argument, federal prosecutor Eugene Miller said he didn't know her by name, but her name wasn't important to him. He wanted a certain type of woman, a petite woman who could easily be disposed of. Words could not describe their pain and suffering. It's, uh, it, it's unthinkable. It's so hard. For the defense, the true legal battle now lies ahead, keeping Christensen off death row. The prosecution's allegations of torture and premeditation at the heart of it. Of Christensen's recorded words describing the murder in horrific detail, defense attorney Elizabeth Pollack argued they were embellishments. It's awful. It's horrible, she said. It makes you want to hate him. But that emotion cannot overcome the facts. An attorney for Jung's relatives was asked if the family wants the death penalty for Christian Sid. He would only say that the family was consulted and its wishes considered before prosecutors made this a capital case. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.